Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So as you know, we discussed about the protein structure in brief details. So now we'll study about the protein function. Right. So for protein function, so as we know that proteins are dynamic molecules and their interactions are affected in a physiological important ways by sometimes subtle but sometimes striking changes in the protein conformation. So what does that mean? So there are like two kinds of interaction uh, with the proteins that goes with the molecule. So for example, first is that the chemical configuration. So when the when the result of the reaction is that it alters the chemical configuration or the composition of the interacting molecule with the protein acting as a reaction catalyst or it's also known as the enzymes right that's so one kind of uh, protein function or like that alters the uh, chemical configuration or composition of the molecule and the second kind is that the chemical configuration or the nor the composition of the interacting molecule is changed so in the second type of interaction that does not change the uh, chemical configuration or composition of the molecule so we'll discuss first regarding that and then we'll later on see the enzymes transient interaction between uh, the protein and the molecule that does not change the chemical configuration but helps for the physiological processes like what what's the example of that is like for example oxygen transport you can see that oxygen transport right immune function immune function or muscle con muscles con contractions contraction right so these are some of the few examples so first we'll see some of the terms regarding the functions of the protein so the functions of many proteins involves the reversible binding of the molecule right so that is known a molecule that is bound reversibly by a protein is called a ligand right so the first term is ligand and what is that A molecule bound reversibly right by a protein by a protein that is called ligand right and the the binding side so the ligands may be of many kinds of any kind of molecule including that will that that might be another protein as well it's not just other molecule so if the protein is binding to a protein that's also may might, may be referred to as a ligand and the transient nature of protein ligand interaction that is very critical to life allowing all other organisms to respond rapidly and reversibly to the changing environmental and the metabolic circumstances right so the binding site or the ligand where it binds so for example this is ligand that is binding to a protein right so where the ligand or the protein binds to the molecule is known as the binding site right where protein binds ligand called as binding site right so and this this binding site is complementary to this uh, ligand size shape charge and hydrophobic or hydrophilic character and when we see about this uh, this interaction so this interaction are really very specific the protein can discriminate among the thousands of different molecules in its environment and selectively bind only one or few types so in a given protein that may have a separate binding site for several different ligands. It's not just one protein only binds to one ligand, but like one protein may have several different binding sites and it can bind to different or several different ligands, right? So these specific molecular interactions are crucial in maintaining the high degree of order in the living system, 
right and the binding of this protein and a ligand is often coupled to a conformational change in a protein so for example when protein is a is uh, allowed to bind with the ligand so like what the protein may have some conformational changes and that makes the binding site more complementary to the ligand permitting tighter binding so the structural adaptation that occurs between protein and ligand is known is called induced fit so the structural adaptations right is that occurs that occurs between protein and ligand and ligand is called induced induced feet right all right and the, this interaction between the ligands and the protein may also be or can be regulated usually through the specific interaction with one or more additional ligands so this other ligands what will they will do they will make cause conformational changes in the protein so that will affect the binding of the first ligand so on the other hand the enzyme represents a special case of a protein function so what the enzyme do they bind and chemically transform other molecules or the molecules acted upon by enzymes are called reactions substrate rather than ligands right so in when we will discuss about the enzyme so the molecule that is acted upon by an uh, enzyme are called what they are called they are called reaction substrates it's not called ligands so so when we will discuss later on after this so the molecules acted upon molecule acted upon by enzymes are called reaction substrate rather than ligands right they are called reaction substrate substrate rather rather than ligands right and the binding site that we have now it's it's not called the binding site then the ligand it's called all right i will do here the binding site for this enzyme and the molecule is called the catalytic site or active site as well sometime right all right all right so I, now as we discuss few of the terms before the protein function so now first we'll discuss about the ligand so we'll discuss about the reversible binding of protein Reversible, right? Reversible binding of a protein. So first, discuss about this to a ligand, and we'll see the example. The example is, all right, I'll write down here. Example is oxygen binding protein. oxygen binding protein okay so for the for to understand the oxygen binding protein so the myoglobin and hemoglobin may be the most studied and best understood proteins so they were the first proteins for which three dimensional structures were determined as you know we studied in the protein structure regarding the myoglobin and this two molecule illustrate almost every aspect of that critical background can biochemical processes or the critical biochemic biochemical processes so the reversible binding of a ligand to a protein well that's why we'll see the myoglobin and the hemoglobin all right so the oxygen is poorly soluble in aqueous solution right so when if it's oxygen is in the solution aqueous solution or water like it is poorly soluble and cannot be carried to tissues in sufficient quantity if it is just simply dissolved in blood serum right so for example if it's oxygen is directly in the blood serum 
like it won't be carried to the tissues that is required that oxygen is required in the tissues right so also the diffusion of oxygen through tissues is ineffective over the distances greater than a few millimeters right it, it cannot go very far the distances the diffusion of oxygen is not would not be great so the evolution of larger multicellular animals depended on the evolution of proteins that could transport and store oxygen right so in all of the larger and the multicellular animals like human beings included right so the evolution of protein that could transport and store oxygen right so however none of the amino acid side chains in proteins are suited for the reversible binding of oxygen molecule so remember like proteins have different kinds of amino acids right they have a sequence of amino acids and they are they are built their structure is built from there but remember one thing so none of the amino acid side chain in proteins are suited for the reversible binding of oxygen molecule for this role is filled by certain transition metals among that them are so which which metals iron and copper so this two this role oxygen binding role depends on the transition metal that is iron and copper and these both have a strong tendency to bind oxygen right so in multicellular organisms exploit the properties of metals like most commonly iron for oxygen transport so for multicellular organism iron is most commonly used for the oxygen transport right so so free iron so however free iron so just just like fe so if you have a free iron in your blood so that is not bound to any other molecules or or inside the protein or bound to the protein so free ions promotes the formation of high reactive oxygen species so when free ion reacts with oxygen it develops hydroxyl radicals that's oh right promotes formation so when uh, if when the free ion is uh, when this free ion reacts with oxygen right uh, it might develop hydroxyl radical and this hydroxyl radicals that can damage dna and other macromolecules so iron that is used in cell is therefore bound in forms that can make it less reactive so that cannot damage dna or other macromolecules so in multicellular organisms especially those in which iron that is in its oxygen binding capacity must be transported over large distances right so this iron is used to travel in the blood to carry to different tissues that is that requires oxygen and iron is often incorporated into a protein bound prostatic group that is called heme group right so iron is often incorporated and is often incorporated into a protein protein bound prostatic group prostatic group that is called heme group right so remember that we when we studied about the myoglobin structure so the myoglobin has in the center fe plus that is iron and that group is called a heme group you can see that video for that protein structure when we discuss about the tertiary structure and the link is in the description box and you can see like when we discussed about this heme group all right so you can see the picture for this myoglobin and particularly just the center part of the myoglobin that is this heme so as you can see in the picture the heme consists of a complex organic ring structure that we discussed in our previous videos so right so it has as you can see the fa2 plus that's in the in between so this complex uh, organic ring structure is known as protoporphyrin right it's called protoporphyrin ring right that's the ring so to which 
it's a bond in a single ion atom in its ferrous state. So that we have to remember is the center of this ion is in the ferrous state that is Fe2 plus, right? Why? We'll see that. So the ion atom, this Fe2 plus, as you can see in the image, has a six coordination bonds, right? The four you can see that has to the nitrogen atoms that are a part of this flat porphyrin ring system. And the two will be, so you can see just the four, but the two are perpendicular to this porphyrin, right? Uh, that we discussed in the previous video that the perpendicular, so the one is attached to the oxygen. So the, co the coordinated nitrogen atoms that this four corners you can see, this which have an electron donating character. So that help prevents conversion of this heme ion, Fe2+, plus. it will prevent the conversion to the ferric state because the ferric ion in this ferrous state binds oxygen reversibly but in this ferric state uh, it does not bind oxygen so heme is found in this in many oxygen transporting proteins as well as in some proteins such as cytochromes as well that participate in oxidation reduction so this heme group is found in cytochromes as well for the oxidation reduction reactions all right so if if this heme group is free free heme group molecules that is not bound to the protein leaves this ferrous state fe2 plus with two open coordination bonds so that i will show you all right so we'll just draw the edge with the, the image that you saw earlier so that was the center part that you saw with the fe2 plus and the surrounding side was with the nitrogen atoms right we'll see the perpendicular view or the side view of this heme group so for example if this is fe right that's the ion atom so this is right the perpendicular to it okay and this so on this side on one side that it is attached to one of the the nitrogen let's see what it says okay and that is attached here and this is in fact attached something like this and the other side is attached to the O2 so this is uh, the side view or the edge view Right, this is the edge view and this is the perpendicular plane of porphyrin right plane of porphyrin ring system porphyrin that is perpendicular and this is the proximal Yes, so this is is the histidine residue. So this is, and that's the oxygen that you can see. So, so as we see in this picture, right? You can see that, right? Perfect. So this free, so for example, this is in the uh, protein molecule that is myoglobin, for example. But if this is just free heme molecule, so if this is just free in the blood serum, so this Fe2 plus with this two coordination. So this will have this oxygen and this will also have this. So what happened? The reaction of this O2 molecules with two free heme molecules or the two free Fe2 plus can result in the irreversible conversion of this Fe2 plus to the ferric state. This as we discussed about and the ferric state is not having the capacity for oxygen binding. But so therefore in heme, the heme containing proteins, this reaction is prevented. So how this reaction, this conversion is prevented from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus by sequestering this each heme in the deep within the protein structure. So that's why this group is hidden in the protein structure in the very deep in the center of the protein structure. So therefore when it's stiff, so it will not have access to this two open coordination. So these are this open coordination bonds in the heme group. So they, it will not access 
or the excess will be restricted for the conversion of FA2 plus to FA3 plus. So, so in globins, one of these two coordination, so the first one is occupied by the side chain of nitrogen to a highly conserved histidine group. So this is HIS is the short form of the amino acid histidine that is referred to as a proximal histidine residue. And the other end is binding site for the molecular oxygen that is O2. Right, so this is when this oxygen binds uh, to this heme group. So the electronic properties of the heme ion changes and this accounts for the change in the color from the dark purple of oxygen depleted venous blood to the bright red of the oxygen rich arterial blood. Right, so when it bounds to this heme group, so the heme group will change its color from the dark purple to the bright red color. And some small molecules such as carbon monoxide, remember this, okay, we'll move from here, such as CO or carbon monoxide and nitric oxide as well. Nitric oxide that coordinate to heme ion with greater affinity than oxygen. So the oxygen definitely has affinity to bind with this heme group. But carbon monoxide and nitric oxide have more affinity to bind with this heme group. So when a molecule of carbon monoxide is bound to this heme group, oxygen is excluded. And that is why a carbon monoxide is highly toxic to aerobic organism, right? And then by surrounding and sequestering or isolating this heme group inside the protein, the oxygen binding protein regulates the excess of small molecules to the heme ion. All right, so this is the example of myoglobin. So the globins are widespread family of proteins that all have a similar primary and tertiary structures, right? So all these globins have similar primary and tertiary structures and globins are commonly found in eukaryotes of all classes and even in some bacteria as well. And the functions of globins are most functions is oxygen transport or oxygen storage. All right, so all right down here. Function of globins, right? So that is. Oxygen transport and storage, right? And although the, there is like some other, some play a role of uh, in the sensing of oxygen as well, like nitric oxide or carbon monoxide as well, some of the globin can sense the oxygen, right? And humans and other mammals, there are at least four kinds of globins. Okay, we'll write it down here. So, you know, humans and mammals, they have four kinds of globin or other globins. So, four kinds of globin, right? So, the monomeric myoglobin, right, that we discussed about, why it's monomeric? It's because it has a single polypeptide chain or it's a monomer. Right, myoglobin facilitate, facilitates oxygen diffusion in muscle tissues. Right, so okay, so we'll write it down here. Monomeric myoglobin. So, what's the function of monomeric myoglobin? Photo oxygen diffusion. Oxygen diffusion in muscle tissues, right? So make some space. Right, so the one of the first example is monomeric myoglobin that facilitates oxygen diffusion in muscle tissues. So that's why myoglobin is particularly abundant in the muscles of diving mammals such as whale and seals where it also has an oxygen storage function.
for prolonged excursion under sea, right? And then the second is you can see that's the tetrameric. Tetrameric hemoglobin. Why tetrameric? Because of the four four monomers that will this tetramer, right? And the tetrameric hemoglobin is responsible for oxygen transport, right? So it's uh, oxygen transport in the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, correct? Then there is monomeric neuroglobin neuroglobin right that is expressed largely in the neurons so these are C's seen in neurons they expressed largely in the neurons and this helps to protect the brain from hypoxia or ischemia Or ischemia. Wait, right? okay. If you don't know hypoxia, that's low oxygen, right? And ischemia is restricted blood supply. And this we'll discuss later on, but just. supply All right and the fourth kind is cytoglobin so that's also a monomeric globin and that is found in high concentrations in the walls of blood vessels so where they are found found in High concentration, only high concentrations in the soft. So found in the high concentration of the walls of blood vessels. So where it functions to regulate. So there is functions function to regulate the. Regulate levels of nitric oxide. All right. So these are the four kinds of globin that are found in the humans and in other mammals as well. So the first is monomeric myoglobin. So the function is diffusion, oxygen diffusion, and oxygen storage. Second is the tetrameric hemoglobin that we know that has an oxygen transport function in the bloodstream. Third is the monomeric neuro neuroglobin that are found in neurons and that help protects the brain from hypoxia and ischemia. And the fourth is the cytoglobin that are found in the high concentration in the walls of blood vessels. So their functions is to regulate the levels of nitric oxide. All right guys, so this was the one protein function that we saw right and we discussed about the globins and four kinds of globins and how it reacts with the oxygen but guys so we'll still continue with the protein function as it has it is also a long topic all right guys thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe the channel right we'll see you in the next video take care